Hey everybody, how's it going? It's a Daily Shooter, and today we're going to talk about the top five nines that are still available on the California roster, so let's get started. Now, this top five list is going to focus on full-size nines that are still going to be available on the roster. As of today, at least, the roster keeps dwindling every single year, and there's less and less available from fewer and fewer manufacturers. So it's really difficult for people to navigate the roster in California. One of the problems that people have is that when they look at the roster, they see a bunch of different brands. I think right now there's maybe nine different brands that are available on the roster. You have Armscore, you have H&K, you have CZ, you have Glock, you have Sig, you have Car high point things like that so there's a bunch of different manufacturers that are available but the list starts dwindling more and more when you start taking out all of the duplicates because there is a different code for each variation of the same gun so if you have something that has a stainless steel slide and a black frame and then you have the exact same thing but this time it has a black slide and a black frame those are going to show up on the list as two different things that you can purchase so once you take those duplicates out and realize that really it's only a color variation the list becomes smaller and smaller so if you have seven pages right now of nines total we're talking subcompact full size and so forth uh, that list dwindles down to maybe a total of four pages so so it's really hard for people to see not only what's on there but what's available and what's good so this top five is going to be in no particular order uh, i base it off of several different factors like reliability durability longevity uh ease of serviceability so if you have to get parts or you know service something on your own how easy is it to do that and then my own personal experience with it now i haven't owned all of these but i've shot all of these that are in the top five enough to have uh, gained enough experience where i feel like i could suggest it to somebody so let's go ahead and get started and again this is in no particular order now, the first one on the list is going to be the SIG 226 Scorpion. The Scorpion is a beautiful pistol. It's one of those ones that you know when you purchase it, you're going to have it for your lifetime, your kid's lifetime. It is an all metal construction, flat dark earth Cerakoted 226 with some added features that you're not going to find on the standard 226, obviously like the Cerakote. It's got an enhanced beaver tail, G10 grips, a very nice rail on it, uh, so you can add your lights, your lasers. It comes with Sig Light night sights already pre-installed. Uh, it is absolutely one of the best that's out there. you got a 4.4 inch barrel, uh, 9 millimeter. All capacity is going to be the same all the way across the board between these top five, just simply because of the magazine restrictions that are in place as of right now. Now, obviously, there's a case going through the court system right now to try and have the magazine capacity laws that are in California overturned. Firearm Policy Coalition is pushing really hard for that, so hopefully that will change. But since magazine capacity isn't really a big factor in my decision making in this, again, if you buy it in California, it's going to come with the 10-round magazine, so that's something to consider right there. But the 226, without a doubt, is one of the finest that you're going to buy. Uh, if somebody came to me right now and said, look, you're only going to have one for the rest of your entire life, and it's going to be a 226 scorpion i'd be perfectly fine with that now the next one on my list is kind of a classic the design's been around for a long time but again that kind of leans into the factors that i was looking at when i was choosing my top five longevity durability reliability those are all factors that come into play after something's been out for a while now i know that everything on the roster has been out for a long time there's really nothing new on the roster so everything that's on there right now has been around but this right here is another one that's been used by militaries and law enforcement all around the world and we know it to be a great design and that is any of the cz 75 models that are currently on the list okay if you get a cz 75 again you're going to get an all steel construction, all metal construction, both frame and slide build. Uh, it's going to be uh, something that I think that just about anybody with an average size or generally sized hand can use. They have excellent trigger, excellent recoil impulses. Uh, you're talking about a barrel length, again, over four inches. So this is going to be a, a full size. Now, just like with the 226 Scorpion, the CZ 75s are going to be a little bit heavier due to the fact that they are all metal frames. Both are going to be hammer fired. Now, with the CZ, again, you're talking about decades worth of proven track record that will back these things up. Now, talking about the CZ just a little bit more, if I had to choose one of the models that's available on the roster since, you know, it's kind of vague to say any of the 75 models, I would probably choose the SP-01. That's uh, probably going to be my choice out of all of the CZ 75s that are there. But again, you can't go wrong with the 75, probably just like the 226 is still excellent. But if we're talking about the best of the best, for me, it's SP-01 and the 226 Scorpion. Now, 
Now the next one on my list is actually going to be something that's a little bit more affordable. So uh, the other two are different varying prices. You're going to be probably over $1,000 for that Scorpion. And then you're going to fall probably well under $1,000 uh, for the CZ. But the next one is going to come in at under $500. So this is going to put it in a lot more people's market, a lot more uh, price point that people are looking at, a better price point, excuse me. This one's going to come in at under $500. And this is going to be the Smith & Wesson SD9 VE. Now, why did I put the SD9 VE on the list if there's so many great pistols out there? Well, it's because when you take a look at the roster, you have to work with what you have, right? And for me, that one is one of the best that's on the roster. Why? Because it's been around for so long. It's essentially a Glock 19, just looks a little bit different from a different company. And it has, in my personal experience, since I've owned one and I've shot thousands of rounds to them, uh, they are very reliable, they're accurate, but the one that I'm talking about specifically is gonna be the SD9 VE High Vis. The High Vis is gonna come with high visibility fiber optic sights, so you get uh, forward serrations, you get rear serrations, you get high visibility, um, fiber optic sights. You get a decent trigger that has the hinge safety on it, uh, unlike a Glock, which has that little um, uh, center piece on it, you know, that you have to pull back in order for the trigger to activate. Uh, same 10 round capacity, polymer frame, stainless steel. It's very nice looking and they just run. It's one of those things where, again, if you buy it and you know it's going to run, they're very easy to service, takes down again, just like a Glock. So if you want to switch out for parts and, you know, get stainless steel guide rods or new springs or change out a striker you can go ahead and do that it is uh, a nice little striker fired nine millimeter that is in that four inch barrel range that is in my opinion it's it it could be go go either way either compact or full size but we're going to put it in the full size list because uh, i think that it definitely works up there if you're going to buy one pistol for duty or you're looking for something a little bit different uh, i think that the smith and wesson sd9 ve is an excellent choice now, the next one on my list is going to be the H&K USP9 V1. Uh, V1's been around for a while. It is a 4.2-inch barrel, polymer-framed, hammer-fired, single-double-action pistol. It's just a all-around great pistol. If you're looking for reliability and accuracy, this is definitely one of the ones that you would want to go with. I would put it right up there with everything else that's in this category. Uh, some of these might be better than others in certain areas, like durability and stuff like that. But as far as what I would pick for the top five in the list, the H&K USP 9 V1 is definitely up there. It's a great pistol, and I don't think anybody that bought one would be disappointed. Uh, I think that as far as the roster goes when it comes to full-size nines, absolutely one of the top five. Now, the last one on our list is gonna be the Glock 17 Gen 3. And even with all of the later generations that have come of Glocks, uh, the Glock 17 Gen 3 is still a workhorse. Now, there's a lot of mixed opinions when it comes to the Gen 3 Glocks, and that's because of the finger grooves that are on there. Some people wanna see those removed. There's some people that love the hump, some people that hate the hump, the grip angle. Uh, but you know, it's still one of those ones that's been around for decades. It's accurate, it's reliable. There's ranges all across the country that rent these things out that have put hundreds of thousands of rounds to them and the only thing that they've ever had to change is maybe a recoil spring you know it gets a little bit light or something like that it's very easily user serviceable and you can modify them there's so many people out there that are modifying them these days that you could essentially take a gen 3 glock 17 and really turn it into something that's as good or better than a gen 5 you could add front serrations you could have the finger grooves removed you can even change the angle of the back strap on that glock now the great thing about the Glock 17 is you can also put a 34 slide so it gives you the ability to have more than one slide or more than one style available to you so if you were to buy a 17 and then maybe you wanted to do some competition as well you can get a 34 slide barrel uh, and an assembly and simply switch out the 17 put on the 34 and you're good to go for a competition match and then if you want something that you can carry or keep for home defense and uh, you don't want all that fancy bells and whistles that you find on a 34 slide just go ahead and put the 17 slide back on it's a, a great pistol and definitely something that i would recommend to anybody who's looking and again with the gen 3 it's still a gen 3 there's still plenty good going on with it but as with all glocks they're so modifiable 
that you just wouldn't believe it. Pretty much everything available on the market is going to be available for a Glock. Now, we all know that the roster is totally unconstitutional, okay? It's basically a backdoor ban scheme is what it is. But it, currently, if an FFL wants to continue to hold his FFL in California, that's all they're going to have for sale in their stores. The only way to get something that's not on the list is to do a person-to-person -person transfer from somebody who was legally able to own it in the first place. So, for instance, if you know somebody that was in law enforcement, they bought something, they don't want it anymore, uh, then that could be a way where you could acquire it from him because it's currently owned in California and it's a person-to-person -person transfer. So, I've seen people get rid of all sorts of cool stuff on their off-roster guns like Smith & Wesson uh, M&P9s, 2.0s, Gen 5 Glocks. I mean, all the stuff that people want is going to be available. You just have to know where to look for it, when to look for it, go to pawn shops, look for those trade-ins, look for, uh, you know, look for things that are on the market that you'll find there and they're not, it's not like you're going to find a lot of them, but they're available to you if you can look for them. So yeah, off-roster stuff is still available, just a little bit harder to find. And I'll tell you one thing, you're going to pay a premium for it. Uh, I paid nearly $700 for an M&P uh, M 9 when it was off-roster in California. And I did it happily just so that I could have one. So I know that people want these things and they're willing to pay a premium for them just because supply and demand, right? So hopefully we can get the roster overturned one day and Californians can have what they should rightfully be able to have. But for the time being, if you walk into an FFL in California, that's all that's going to be available to you. So at least if you walk in with a little bit of knowledge and knowing what to look at and what's going to be the best right off the bat, it's just going to save you a little bit of time, a little bit of headache searching that roster. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.